Hey, this is Anton over at thehyperadvisor.com. So this is the last video in a, in a little series of videos that I was doing just to get up to this point where we can log into CloudStack and set up an advanced uh, zone, networking zone. So let's get into it. I'm logging into the console. We can go into the infrastructure section and see that there nothing has been set up and configured. Thus far, we'll go ahead and into zones, and we'll go ahead and set up a zone here. We're going to click on advance, and then we're going to give our zone a name. Let's call this zone one. Uh, we'll put in the IP address information for the DNS. I'm using KBM as the hypervisor. I'm going to go ahead and clear this guest seeder that's in here by default and then choose next. Now I do have two physical network adapters in this uh, in the KVM host and did that on purpose of course so that I can separate the, the networking roles or types in CloudStack when we do the, uh, the advanced zone. So if we were just doing a basic zone, you only get the option of configuring one uh, physical network name here. And with the advanced zone, you get to set up multiple, all right? So I'm going to set up these two and, and have the guest network here use GRE. Now when we do this, we'll also have to uh, go ahead and manually type in the the, the network name or what calls the KVM traffic label. So this is basically the bridge name that we've configured in, in one of the previous videos. And we'll go ahead and do that for all of them, all of the network types here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and choose next. I'll go ahead and set up a public uh, IP range. So this will be the public IPs that will get used. I'm going to next and we'll go ahead and set up a pod and then configure the the networking information for this here as well and some uh, an address range for the system this this be used for the system VMs and we'll just continue with the from the IP range that we put on the public side Go ahead and click next, and let's set up a the virtual network ID range. And for this, I'm just going to do 10 to 20. Um, you should probably set this up if you're doing it in production, so it doesn't overlap any of your any of your VLAN IDs. Uh, but in this case, I have no VLAN set up, so I'm going to uh, put 10 to 20 here. Click next. I'm going to set up the cluster. Then we're going to add a host. So this is one of the KVM hosts that uh, that was configured during the installation. Through the wizard, it only allows you to do one host. So we'll have to add the the second host after the wizard has uh, created the zone. And all the other deposits and everything, and and then we get the option where we can go back in and edit the uh, the cluster and add in another host. So in this section, we're going to add the primary storage. Just going to call it primary. Uh, this is going to be NFS, and we're going to point it to our NFS mount point for the primary storage mount point.
Now in this in the secondary storage area here, we're going to set up another NFS location. Um, go ahead and put a name in here for secondary. Just go ahead and point this to the same NFS server, but a different uh, mount point. And it's going to secondary mount point. So we'll go ahead and click next. And all we have to do now is do launch zone. And this will go on out and configure all the stuff that we basically um, put in the parameters for in the wizard. Okay, now the zone has been configured. We'll go ahead and say yes to enable it. So this will go ahead and enable the zone. And if we go in here, we can see that uh, we have the zone pod, uh, clustered hosts, etc. in here. And pretty soon, uh, we should get system VMs that uh, populates into the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and add the second host to the cluster at this time. All right, so the second system is showing up now uh, and has been added to the cluster. Um, and we also have the system VMs coming online, they're starting, and once they've started, we'll go ahead and finish the, uh, the rest of the networking pieces here that we need to do. Okay, so now that the system VMs are running, we can go ahead and create the, uh, the network. So let's go into the network se section here. Um, first, we're gonna create a uh, VPC, or, and we're gonna click Add. And we'll just call it VPC1. Say it's a test. And we'll put in a superseder here. And we'll do a slash 16 so that we can put multiple um, multiple tiers in this VPC, um, which are really just guest networks. Um, you can go in here and change. Uh, with the KVM selection that we have in here, they they allow you to do a net scaler as well. Okay, so the VPC is creating, and while it's creating, what it's also doing is creating a a virtual router, and this virtual router will be used for the the first tier that we put in, or the first guest network that we set up in that VPC. So once the VPC, the virtual router starts up, we'll be able to go in and also configure the uh, the VPC and set up a couple of guest networks or or um, network tiers. Okay, so now that the VR is started or running, we can go into the VPC and start to configure a a um, the the app tier or the guest network. So we'll go to the v, uh, VPC. We'll click configure. And we'll set up a, a new a new tier, and we'll call this uh, DB tier for database tier, and we will make this 10.0.0.1.24, or actually this is the gateway, so we don't have to put the cedar in there. Uh, to the one, five, five, and zero, and we will set this as the default to um, allow, and we'll click OK, and we can create another one, and we will call this uh, web tier. And we'll pick a different gateway here. 